Peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Tuesday, June 22nd, and our reading for today is Romans 12, uh, verses 14 through 21, and uh, we'll be getting this out in the morning. So we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, so we are in Romans chapter 12, and um, if you know Romans chapter 12, it's, you know, Paul has been, been leading up to this, this point where he, he talks then to, um, to the Romans about, uh, about what this life as a, as a Christian, you could, I guess you could say, looks like. And he, and he starts off by, by, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. You know, that's fitting for the, uh, the kind of, the, like I said, the, the theme for this week of God's mercy to us, uh, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And, and um, it says, do not be conformed any longer to this world, uh, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So the, he, he introduces this chapter with this idea of, of, of us offering our lives as sacrifices in light of the sacrifice of Christ, which has been made on our behalf. Right, and that's that mercy of God. So, so that's where where Paul is with this, and um, in light of that that sacrifice that we make, uh, that we are called to make, that we are called to offer of our lives. And of course, as we we speak of that, to be clear, you know, the sacrifice of Christ is that sacrifice which merits our eternal life, merits our forgiveness. You know, there's nothing that we do that earns that that earns heaven for us. We can't earn our way to heaven, right? But um, but as we have been saved in Christ, as we have been redeemed in Him, then then now our, we we belong to Him, and and so uh, why would we not want to do what He wants us to do? So so that's what we do. We offer our bodies as living sacrifices, and this is what that looks like. Verse fourteen. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Believe it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, as you have had mercy on us, we pray that you would grant us uh, that new life uh, where our, our lives would be sacrifices and uh, that, that we would offer them as living sacrifices, knowing the great sacrifice that you have made for us and in doing that in doing so we ask that you would help us that we would um, that we would bless those who, who persecute us and, and not curse them that we re would rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep that we would live in harmony with one another associating with the lowly never being wise in our own sight and giving thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all living peaceably with all as much as it depends on us Never avenging ourselves, but leaving the wrath to you, to knowing that vengeance is yours. Instead, feeding even our enemies, giving them something to drink, not overcoming, not being overcome by evil, but overcoming evil with good, just as you have done, as we are, as you are the one whom we know, who works all things to the good of those who love you, as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so to take a look at these these verses, then I, you know, I think in a lot of ways, uh, as hard as these the, these callings are, and they and they are hard. I mean, they they rail against our sinful nature. They they rail against what we would consider common sense, right? But um, but I I think despite that, they you know we hear the words and they're not that hard to understand, right? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse, right? So so those who do do you harm, bless them. 
uh, and that's reflected in it. But I, as, as we do this, I want to connect to some other places that we see the same teaching, right? So I mentioned the Sermon on the Mount yesterday. We definitely see that there. Um, you know, that we would love our, even our enemies, love even those who persecute us. Um, so bless those who persecute you. Verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Uh, you know, in 1 Corinthians 12, you see the, 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 the um, church described as, as a body. And you actually see that um, even even in earlier in chapter 12, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not have all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in, in Christ and individually members of one another. You know, you see that in 1 Corinthians 12 as well. There's this idea of the body, the body of Christ, and 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 the various members serving toward the same end. Right. Uh, so so uh, in the same way. Uh, as so I've heard it said, you know, when the when the, the toe strikes the the thing in the dark, right, then then the whole body uh, reacts, right. That's you know. So when when those uh, around us rejoice, we rejoice with them and in, in love for them that they have that joy, and um, and as there are those who are sorrowful, we weep with them in in that pain that they feel because we are are, are united with them, right. So rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Um, harmony, you have that theme in, in Philippians 2, where, where Paul says to be of, a, of like mind with one another, um, considering others more important than yourselves in humility. Right? Uh, so there's that, that harmony there. Not being haughty, but associating with the lowly. Uh, we actually will see that in the Psalm this week, Psalm 138, that, that that's what God God does. He He knows where the, the lowly are, and and of course the the um, kind of one of the important themes of Scripture is that uh, you, know, you know the phrase pride goes before a fall, uh, but that as we um, as as we see our estate, as we have the wisdom to to recognize how broken and weak and fallen we are. Um, we become poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For uh, what is it? Theirs will be the, the kingdom of God, right? Um, you know, for for they for they will be made wealthy eternally, right? So so never be wise in your own sight. Where is true wisdom? It's in in the, in the wisdom of the Lord. His ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our our thoughts, right? Okay. So um, verse seventeen. Repay no one evil. Uh, no, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Uh, kind of along the same lines as what we heard. Love even your enemies. You know, Matthew. That's in Matthew five. There, um, verse eighteen. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Uh, you know, I, and I appreciate that that Paul says there, if possible, right? Uh, you know, so we should be peaceable with with all people. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the world pushes against the church, and and we don't get that at peace. So. Um, so yeah, the, li yeah, live peaceably with all, but, but, uh, but, but insofar as it, it's up to us, um, that said, there are a lot of ways it's up to us that we, that we push back on and, and we shouldn't. And, and, um, we insist on our own way, uh, you know, like it says, love is patient, love is kind, does not insist on its own way. And, and, and we are, well, we aren't loving in that way and we ought to be, uh, so we, we, we should be, um, should insist on the, on the Lord's way, right? If we're going to be insistent on anything, otherwise, being being peaceable. Beloved, never avenge yourselves; leave it to the wrath uh, of God. For it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay." Says the Lord. That's from Deuteronomy 32. Uh, a direct citation: "There, vengeance is mine; I will repay." Um, you know, that's the, 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 that's one of the things where we can, as we see that. Um, what was the first part of that? Uh, Never avenge yourselves, right? As we, as something, this harm comes to us, and we want justice for that, and it's not wrong for us to want justice when harm is done, right? That is, that that's not a, a sinful thing in and of itself. Revenge and hate towards that person is, but but just the the um, the justice for that isn't isn't wrong. But but you say, well, then how can we how can we then not avenge ourselves? Well, there there kind of two ways. One is, is that we trust in the authorities that God has put in place. But when those fail, we trust in, in the, 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 the rectification that we have, that, that, that things are made right in the cross of Christ, you know, and, and, that's, and that's where, 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 where sin, the, the, all of the justice against sin has been poured out on him. And, um, and we know on the last day, then there, the, those who 
who don't believe will be uh, will be raised, but to to eternal judgment, and and there will be that vengeance. But on the other hand, you know, sometimes we're hurt by those in the church, and 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 those truly who do believe, but just sin out of weakness, because we all sin out of weakness, and so we don't take vengeance against them, knowing that that their justice has been paid for by Christ, and and we are made right by Christ. And on all of it, so we have we have perfect justice. We don't have to find it for ourselves, knowing that God will will take care of it for us. Uh, continuing, verse twenty. Uh, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to to drink. Along that line of lo love your enemies, as we've been talking about here. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Um, you know, the note in here says that that sounds like you're you're bringing judgment upon them. There's sort of an anger to it, but uh, but. But the note makes the point that this seems more so that you're you're hoping to to draw that person to repentance, that they would know that same mercy of God that, that we know. You know, and so often when people uh, when people do things to harm us, it's because they're not grasping to that 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 knowledge of, of God's mercy to them and going. To, and we pray that they would know that uh, if they if they're a Christian and they know it slightly, we, that they would know it in increasing measure. Um, you know, that that's that's really what the the the, the joy of of our faith is is that. We have this Christ who has, as I said, even when we were his enemies, he has redeemed us. Uh, and finally, do not overcome evil, uh, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's exactly what we see in Christ, that, that he was not overcome by evil. He, he um, did not fall prey to the temptation of the evil one, uh, but he, 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 he was, was crucified. Uh, and, and in that crucifixion, he forgave sin, that he actually overcame evil with good. And, um, and that's what our God does. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. That that's, that's what our Lord does. That he is the one who overcomes evil with good. And that is because he is so good himself. And he is so gracious and merciful and loving. Amen. All right, we continue with the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.